Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today we're going to chat about the tools that I use when I modify my decks. Now, if you've seen some of my more recent Mod With Me videos, I do tend to go over the tools that I am going to be using for that particular mod in every video, but this will be more of an overview. We're going to talk about the tools that I use for trimming a deck, then we'll move on to talking about the tools that I use for edging a deck, and the tools for rebacking a deck. So to start with, we're going to jump right into the tools that I use for trimming a deck. Now I have many videos on my channel where I have done deck mods on camera, as well as some videos about kind of why I mod my decks and a few tutorials. Now the trimming tutorial might be a little bit out of date because I have actually changed my process up or really what I like to say is I've refined my process in 2020. Um, nowadays, I pretty much follow the same process every time I trim a deck, and you can see that process in detail in any of my more recent Mod With Me's. I will leave a link to that playlist in the description box below. But for that particular process, basically what I end up doing is trimming a deck one side at a time so that I get the cleanest, most straightest trim humanly possible. And I do like to say humanly possible because there are going to be slight variations. Um, we're not machine cutting, so nothing's going to be 100% perfect, but you can get pretty dang close if you use the measurement method. So for that method, basically what I use is my Fisker's trimmer and this one is the one that's five inches wide. Now I do get quite a few questions about my trimmer so I'm going to go over a couple of those frequently asked questions here. The first one is do you find this trimmer to be too small and the answer is usually not. There are very very few times when this trimmer isn't wide enough. Most decks are um five inches or less. And so that means that for the most part, I can get almost every type of deck in here. On occasion, I do run into an issue where a really big Oracle might be six inches um, long, and then I have to kind of fudge it a little bit, but that's a very rare occasion. The majority of the decks I trim do fit into this trimmer beautifully. The reason I have this one instead of the larger one is because it takes up less space on my desk, which means I have more working space for other things. It's really easy to use, it's portable, it's fairly slim, and it works really well for the majority of the decks that I have trimmed. The other question I get is how often do I replace my trimmer? The only time I have replaced this trimmer is once, and I replaced it after I trimmed a plastic deck because by that point the trimmer was a few years old and I thought you know a plastic deck is pretty dang hard on a trimmer and so I thought maybe that just might be a good time to replace it. Didn't necessarily need to replace it because I do still have that trimmer and I can still use it but I thought since it had been a few years it was a good time to replace it. Um, the other question I get is how often do I sharpen my blades and the answer is never because this actually has a self-sharpening blade on it so every time you open and close it it's actually supposed to sharpen itself. Now if you want you can put a piece of foil in your trimmer and cut down on it a couple times and that's supposed to help sharpen your blade as well but I've actually never done that. So overall, this is by far my favorite trimmer. If you watch some of my very, very first mod videos, I had a much smaller one um, and it was roughly half the size of this. And I found that, that while it was a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to handle, it actually wasn't big enough and it didn't have a, enough of a sturdy frame to work through those kind of thicker card stocks. The other question that I get quite frequently is would I use a slide trimmer, which is one of these guys. I personally do not recommend these for tarot decks or for any type of cardstock um, because I have had where if your blade is not really, really sharp and your track is not really clean, it can actually just tear your cards rather than cutting it. This is a fantastic trimmer. I use it for paper all the time. But when it comes to actually cutting cards, I prefer the guillotine style. It has less of a chance to actually rip my cards. So while I do know people use the slide trimmer very successfully and it probably works really well on um, with a 
with a new blade, a fresh blade, and on a thinner cardstock. I just prefer this guy. He goes through everything. I mean, I've cut everything from super, super thin cardstock to super, super thick plastic cardstock with this thing, and it's worked beautifully for all of them. So it's definitely my go-to. It's a great size. They do have one that's a little bit bigger, but as you can see here, I just don't have the real estate for that kind of a trimmer. So this is my go-to cutting tool. The other tool that is definitely a go-to for me nowadays, especially in the last year or so, is my corner ruler. So this is basically what I use to create a guide on the other side. And if you watch my more recent Mod With Me videos where I'm trimming a deck, you will see me use this, this and go through this process in detail. So say I wanna put it in here and I would use washi tape to tape it down. We'll talk about the tape here in a minute. I can slide it in here, cut my card, move on to the next one. It actually makes the process a lot faster when you get the hang of it. You don't necessarily need a triangle ruler for this. Um, I find it works best because it gives me a nice edge to butt up against the top and a nice edge for over here. Um, you don't need a super big one. You just need enough to get enough of an edge to create that cradle effect or to create a guide, basically. We have a guide over here. This helps us create a guide on the other side. Again, if you wanna see how this process actually works, check out some of my more recent Mod With Me videos. The other thing that I use um, along with this setup is some sort of removable tape. I like washi tape, and that could just be because I have a basket of it sitting on my desk, so it's always at hand. The thing I do like about washi tape is it peels off anything I put it on, so it peels off my board, it peels off my ruler, and more importantly, when I need to set those first guidelines up, I often tape my card down. Down so that I can put my rulers where I need to and get everything good and situated before I start cutting. Obviously, we want to remove the tape before you start cutting. But the thing I like about the washi is it comes off my cards. No matter what kind of cardstock I put it on, no matter what kind of finish I put it on, it always peels off and it never takes anything with it. And that is really important. Um, I have had people tell me that they have used masking tape um, as well, or painter's tape. I think that would probably work just as well. I cannot personally attest to the fact that they will work on your deck without taking anything off. I can attest to the fact that every piece of washi tape I've ever put on my board or my cards has come off. However, masking tape would probably work just as well. I do not recommend things like packing tape or scotch tape or of course any sort of permanent type tape, right? Um, definitely don't wanna use that. Don't wanna use anything that's too terribly sticky that will take the finish off your card. So that's really important. Um, washi tape I find works best, but again, that just could be because that's what I have on hand. The only other tool that I do regularly use and often forget to mention is my ruler. And that is really just because this particular ruler, the width of it is the same width as the um, between the guard and the blade. So I can use that to kind of just see exactly where that blade's gonna come down on my card. And again, you can see how I actually use that in a mod if you check out one of my recent mod with me's. These are my standard tools for trimming a deck. I have my board, my little, some sort of guide. I like the little triangle ruler, it works well for me. Washi tape to hold it down. My ruler to just double check my, um, where my blade's gonna come down. And those are the tools that I use for trimming. Now, once a deck is trimmed, I like to round the corners. And for that, I always use my Katomaro Pro. In fact, this is the only corner rounder I have anymore. And I have multiples of them because I have one for decks and I have one for paper and I have a couple backups. That is how much I love this trimmer. It works in just about any cardstock. I've only found a few cardstocks that were like super, super thick, glossy, heavy cardstock that I struggled with. It still did make it through it. Um, my hand just got really sore by the end of it. But for the most part, this thing will cut through just about any cardstock I throw at it. The thing that I really love about this one is that it has three different sizes. So it has the small, the medium, and the large. The small is a really small, I want to say it's three millimeter, but I need to double check those specifications. Um, corner, and I tend to use that one on really small decks or decks that I really kind of want more of a square type edge, but I don't actually want it to leave it squared. Um, the medium is kind of the standard that I use for most tarot decks. That is what is on my Llewellyn here. And it's kind of my go-to for anything that is kind of playing card or tarot card size. The large one I tend to 
use for oracle decks, larger decks, or if I really want to soften the look of a smaller deck. So this is really, really versatile. Um, you just need to remember to pop that back off and dump out the um, little triangle bits and those tend to end up everywhere. They're kind of like glitter in that way, but it works beautifully. I never have a problem with it going through cardstock. Um, I've found that, you know, experiment with different ways of holding it because sometimes um, holding it in a different way or in a different manner, particularly depending on which corner you're using, um, can really help with the wear on your hand. Um, this, if you're punching 78 cards times four, I'm not good at math, so we won't try to figure that out, but that's a lot of punching. Um, so your hand does get sore. I like to do it in small chunks. I'll do, um, you know, maybe 10, 20 cards at a time and give myself a break and come back to it but depending on where you're punching, I find that using the medium is often easier because I think it's directly across from the lever. So you tend to get um, a little bit easier time to cut it, but either way, it works really beautiful for pretty much anything I throw at it. And that's definitely my recommended um, corner rounder. I have used several others. I do not recommend, as much as I love the Fiskars trimmer, I do not recommend the Fiskars corner rounders. Every time I've tried one of those, it has eaten my corners and torn my cards. So if there's one that I would warn you to stay away from, that brand would be Fiskars for a trimmer cover for a corner rounder. As far as their guillotine trimmers, their slide trimmers, their scissors all work beautifully, but their corner rounders leave a lot to be desired. So now that we've kind of covered the trimming the deck, let's talk about edging a deck. So when it comes to edging a deck, there are two main methods that people tend to use. That is either stamps or markers. So I do have detailed videos on both of those processes on my channel in my deck mods tutorial, which again, I'll link in the description box below. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about each of these because I did that already in that lengthy video, but I do just wanna kind of talk about some of my favorite and not so favorite tools for edging a deck. My favorite tool overall is stamps, and that is because they are the most forgiving. They tend to wipe off if you're doing it like at the same time, again, if you want to see my etching process, check out any of my newer Mod With Me videos where I actually walk you through the process of how I do this. But my my favorite to use is stamps because they take a minute to dry. So after I edge the card, I can then take a paper towel and wipe off any excess so I don't get that micro border on the front or back because quite honestly, especially after I've trimmed a deck, that drives me up the wall. I've just taken all the time to take the border off the deck and when my medium of choice to edge a deck puts a border back on, that drives me insane. So stamps are by far my favorite. Let's talk a couple of different brands that I really, really like for that. Um, the Distressed Ink is one of my favorites. They do have them in the bigger pads, um, the larger size, but I find that these mini ones are actually a whole lot easier for me to work with when I'm trimming or when I'm edging a deck because I can just hold the deck in my hand and really easily go through and edge the card. Um, again, the distressed ink does wipe off as long as you do it right after you apply it. If you let it sit for a minute or two, it's gonna start to dry. So you're not gonna be able to get that excess off. Um, the distressed ink comes in a lot of really pretty colors. They are tend to be a little bit more of those sort of muted or kind of earthy tones, which I particularly like, although they do have some, some bright ones as well. Um, I particularly like these for doing a sort of antique edging over my cards, which again, I do have a video on that as well. These, because they are distressed inks, they do not fill on the first application, which means you need to either do usually two coats to get a full application to get the whole card side filled in, or you need to do a base coat and then add this over the top to kind of texturize or um, color, or as I like to call it, antique your deck. So that's really important to note with the distress inks. They are not meant to fill. They're meant to distress. They're meant to just kind of add texture, add um, and by texture, I mean color texture, not physical texture, uh, over the top of your ink. So if you're gonna do a card in one of those from the get-go, you'll need to do probably at least two coats, if not three. They are great for a top coat when you uh, to add that layered effect of um, 
ink over the top. So I like to use those not so much as a base coat, but as a top coat in order to kind of distress my decks. Um, another brand that I really like is the Dewdrop line and they have these what they call these little um brilliance actually this is the brilliance line because i do have a big one as well i do prefer these little ones but i use the gold quite often so i do have a bigger one of that they generally come in four packs they have a metallic one they have what they call their chalk ink which is um kind of a lot softer and then they have their memento line um, which is a little bit of a wetter ink all of these work really wonderfully on decks and again if you catch it right after you put it on and you wipe the excess off you'll be able to get that micro bleed off um the brilliance line is my favorite for metallic colors it works beautifully um, again with these you generally have to do two coats i always encourage you to do two coats rather than one really really thick heavy one from the get-go when you are stamping you do need to um include a little bit of drying time. I generally like to let them dry for about a half an hour before I stack them up, and then I let them dry about a, a day or overnight before I actually use them. Um, another ink that I've used is the Colorbox ink. Now, I've only done um, one deck with this, so I can't speak to really its longevity, but it is an archival ink, and that is definitely something that you wanna look for. Um, if you're looking for stamps, archival ink definitely adheres much better and stays the color stays truer longer on a deck when you're using that archival ink, which I do believe all of these are. Now, let's talk markers, because that is not only a really easy and affordable way to edge a deck. Um, it's also tends to be one of the most popular, I think, because the stamps do take a bit more work. Um, the markers, I still generally have to do two coats. I don't think I've found a medium yet that I don't have to do two coats to get that full saturation. So there's kind of a couple of different camps when it comes to markers. Um, Sharpie is always the big old standby. I don't even have a chisel tip Sharpie marker to show you. And in fact, I had to go dig for this one because I personally can't stand Sharpies. The smell of them actually gives me a migraine. So I don't use Sharpies. It is important to note that while it says it is a permanent ink, it is not archival level. So it does fade. And there has been many instances and complaints of people saying that the blues, the reds, and the blacks do come off on your hand. Now it's important to note that with any marker, that is possible. So generally, if you can kind of wipe it off, wipe it down with a paper towel, that helps. You can put a layer of the distressed ink over it. Sometimes that helps. And sometimes just it's general wear and tear. Eventually it will start to kind of fade and stop coming off in your hands. But I know that Sharpie, particularly like the metallic Sharpies, are a favorite among many deck modders. It's just not a marker that I ever use because the smell of it does actually give me a migraine. So I don't keep Sharpies in my house and I had to go hunt down one to even find one to show in this video. Um, another favorite is art markers. And these would be things like the Tombows or the art alternatives. Um, these are generally water-based markers and Sometimes that throws people off because they think water-based, it's gonna come right off. As with any marker, it, it has the potential to rub off on your hands. Um, I personally do not use art markers or my Tombows in particular on my decks because it ruins your marker. Um, the more you kind of dig into it with the, the edge of your deck, because basically you take the marker and you run it along the edge, right? Um, it creates grooves in your markers. I use my Tombows and my art markers for actual journaling and art, so I do not personally use them on my decks. However, I know a lot of people do and do so with um, a great deal of success. They do come in a, a variety of colors and they are um, wonderful on your, on your decks. One of my favorites to use is actually highlighters. And this is the Mild Liner brand. And this is like, this is the yellow, right? If I do a deck in yellow, this is my favorite yellow color. It is the one that is on my Llewellyn, which is actually starting to get a little bit faded and may need a freshen up, but that is the yellow that it is. Um, it's kind of a, a mustardy type yellow, a little bit lighter. Um, and I just love the way that it looks on cards. And the great thing about this is it's very forgiving. So if you 
edge your, your card and then you immediately, again, like I said, do the paper towel trick where you wipe it down. Um, you'll get off any excess and it'll all stay on the edge of the cards and you can wipe any bleed over. The bleed over with the mild liner is very, very minimal. You can also use pretty much any sort of highlighter and you can get some really great fluorescent colors that way. Um, I know a lot of people have had success with a lot of different highlighters. So another kind of really favorite of mine is actually Crayola markers. And that is mostly because they are affordable, they are readily available, and they come in a huge variety of colors. So the thing you have to watch with the Crayolas is again, it's another water-based marker. So it can have a tendency to rub off on your hands. It is not archival level, so it will fade. Um, but I find that, you know, that can be the case with any of these mediums because it really depends on your cardstock, the coating on your cards, and whether or not you are edging on a um, coated edge, meaning you haven't trimmed it yet, or a raw edge because you have trimmed the deck. All of that goes into play, comes into play, and makes a difference as to how your markers actually work on your cards. Same with stamps, actually. Um, the thing that I have noticed is the... Um, these sort of Crayola super tips, I think tend to work the best because they have a little bit smaller tip. It's a little bit more like a chisel, just a little bit easier to control. Um, these larger broad tip ones are nice too and they work quite well. Um, and you can, I don't know if you can see, but I've already grooved my marker. So I have a set of Crayolas that is just for trimming or just for edging decks. Um, I don't use them in other art projects. That's all that they're there for because every time you edge a deck, you're gonna ruin your marker. The one thing that I have found is that if you are looking at markers, these ultra clean washable markers, these don't tend to stay near as well. Um, they tend to fade faster and they tend to have a lot more transfer off onto your hand. They do eventually stop transferring. They really do. Um, I think every deck that I've had, except for one, which we'll talk about here when I kind of go through some of my edgings, um, all of them, except for one, have eventually stopped. But I found that these ultra clean ones tend to transfer off a little bit worse. Um, and they don't, the color doesn't stay near as long. But that is a great alternative for um, just a really affordable, easily available, and with a wide variety of colors um, option for edging your decks. So those are kind of the two main things. Um, you can use other things like paint or really any sort of coloring medium. You just wanna make sure that you're careful, you test it all first, and as always, I always recommend testing on a deck that um, like a cheap deck of playing cards or something first until you kind of get the hang of working with your medium and how it's going to work. So that's kind of a look at some of my favorite um, supplies for markers and then some of my favorite supplies for stamps for actually edging the deck. So real quick, I thought we would just take a look at a couple of decks that I have edged in various um, mediums that we've talked about here today. Of course, I have my Llewellyn Tarot, which was edged in the Mild Liner Marker. This is my... Um, Mythical Goddess, which has edged in marker, stamp, and then um, covered in Mod Podge to actually seal all those in. Um, I know I have a video on this one on my channel. This one is trimmed in the gold stamp, so the Brilliance Gold. Um, it is starting to fade a little bit because this deck is pretty well worn. I use it quite often, um, and so you can see that it does eventually fade a little bit. I could just throw another um, layer on there and that would take care of that. Uh, more recently, I did my Plant Spirit Oracle in Crayola Marker, which I think came out fabulous. This is definitely one of my favorites. Um, again, no transfer on my hands. Everything is, is good and dry and working quite well. Then I have a couple of what I call my um, sort of antique effects where I use different layers of um, distressed ink to kind of create this. Sometimes I use a marker base, but this one has a, um, a multicolored um, distressed ink that I have kind of run over it to give it this kind of vintagey look. There are places where I have um, some of the browns, some of the greens, and some of the grays in the stamp. And it just gives it that lovely sort of variegated um, distressed look to it. 
And here you can see another um, example of that where I have actually used the mild liner yellow as my base and then gone over it with um, the Distressed Ink. I believe I used the Tea Stain for this one, but it was quite a while ago, um, where I just kind of rub that in and do the, the edges so that I can get that really um, sort of antique and worn look. Um, again, I do have videos on these processes on my channel, so I'll be sure to leave those linked for you. But that's kind of a look at some of the different techniques that you can get or some of the different looks that you can get out of your um, sort of markers, stamps, and then combination thereof. So the final thing I thought we would cover in this video is rebacking a deck. Now this is not something that I do very often anymore, but when I do reback a deck, I do tend to use contact paper. So I do have a whole video on how I go about the process of rebacking a deck um, in my deck mod tutorials, which again, I will leave linked in the description box below. I'm sorry, you're probably tired of hearing me say that. Um, I just pulled out a couple different examples of some decks that I have rebacked. Um, this is my Nicoletta, which I have done all kinds of things to. Um, I have trimmed it, I have reorganized it, and I have rebacked it and edged it. Um, this I rebacked in a sort of faux leather contact paper. It um, ended up actually being repositionable, so I actually had to glue it all down. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at contact paper is if it is the repositionable or movable contact paper, it's not gonna stay adhered to the back of your cards. So I ended up having to actually glue the contact paper down to the cards, which made this process a whole lot more um, in-depth than I really intended it to be, but it did end up coming out really nice. It does make the deck Quite a bit heavier and chunkier, but um, it's wonderful if you want to reback a card. Um, the other thing that it does really well is give a card a bit more um, substance and heft. So this is the um, Universal Worth Tarot, which is one of my favorites. I, again, I trimmed this one totally down and it was on a, um, a little bit thinner card stock and I didn't really care for the backs. So I rebacked this in a wood grain contact paper. I do wanna say that these are both contact papers that I just picked up at my local um, home goods store and I have found that the few that I've ordered online didn't really work out very well. So make sure that you're real careful, read the reviews if you're getting them online and always, always test your contact paper first. I have mentioned a few issues that I've had with contact paper in a couple different videos. More recently in my deck mod fails video where I talked about how sometimes I ended up with contact paper that would shrink and then it pretty much ruined the deck. Um, so far, this one is staying in place nicely. I did this one um, maybe three years ago, I wanna say, and it's held up really well. It does make the cards quite heavy, but it also makes them really, really substantial. Um, it makes them pretty flexible, and it's great for um, kind of adding a, a little bit of of heft to a thinner cardstock. So I don't have really particular brands that I like because I find that the brand doesn't really matter so much because a brand that works really well on one deck won't work so great on another because the cardstock might be different. So it really depends on what you're sticking it to, what kind of finishes on the card, um, what kind of contact paper you're using. And so I can't really recommend one brand over another. I just really wanna make sure to point out that make sure you test it first and test it on, um, different types of card stocks if you can, or at least at the very least test it on like a different, a cheap set of playing cards. Look for things like, is it going to adhere? Is it going to permanently stay? Is it going to um, peel up? Is it going to shrink? The shrinking thing you kind of only know when it's set around for a while. So I encourage you, if you're using a new contact paper, try it on something, let it sit for a while and see what it does. Um, I was not aware that shrinking was an issue with contact paper until my first experience with it. The only other contact paper that I have used is the clear contact paper. And for this one, I do know that I use the duck brand 
and this is just one that I've used to actually cover the fronts of my collage card. I have heard that people have used clear contact paper um, very successfully just to add strength to a flimsy cardstock. And so that's kind of my limited experience with contact paper. I haven't really used it a lot. I've done a few deck mod um, rebackings with it. It's not my favorite process to be perfectly honest and I really don't do it that often, um, but it does work to kind of help give um, some substance to a thinner cardstock or as you see here, I love to use it to cover up my collage cards to just make sure that all these little bits all stay in place so that I can eventually put them into my computer and scan them in so that I can have them printed into an actual deck. So that's a look at some of my favorite and most used supplies for modifying my decks. So the tools that I use to actually trim my decks, to round the corners, to edging, and of course rebacking on a very rare occasion. Thank you for joining me today. You will find links for everything featured here in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.